Welcome back to part two of this orientation to Archivmatica. Let's look now at moving a package of content through Archivmatica. In this video, we're going to focus on the transfer tab, which is where you'll set up and initiate the processing of a package of content into an AIP. If you'd like to read in more detail about any of the processes we're covering in this video, take a look at the transfer section of Archivmatica's documentation. That's this section right here. The link to the documentation is listed alongside this video. If you'd like to follow along and process a transfer yourself at the same time, you can sign in to the demo Archivmatica site by selecting the demo tab, also at archivmatica.org. And then the username and the password and the link to the sandbox are all right here. All right, so now let's get started making an AIP. So I've logged in here to Archivmatica already, and I'm on the dashboard on the transfer tab, which you can see up here at the top. And so now I'm going to select a transfer type. Archivmatica accepts transfers in any of seven types. And for this video series, we're just going to do a standard transfer. So I'll go ahead and select that. I'm going to give my transfer a name. And the accession number is an optional field, so I'm going to leave that blank. And I'm not sending a dip to an access system, but if I was, I might put an access system ID in this field here. So we'll leave that blank too. And next, I'm going to select some content to include. So this is staged content. So if you're in the sandbox, it'll look quite similar. I'll just expand this directory, get into our sample transfers. And I'm going to select the images directory and add that. Here, if you click on the little caret on the right, you'll see different um, configurations for processing the transfer. I'll explain later in this video series how you can set up one of these configurations. But if you're going to run with a configuration, this is where you would choose it. But we're going to do the default configuration so that I can show you all the decisions I'm making. So I just clicked on Start Transfer to go ahead and start processing that content. And then I'll click Browse just to minimize that window so we can see what's happening. So you can see down here, several microservices have already populated. The earliest ones are the one at the ones at the bottom, and then they populate above that as Archivmatica continues processing my content. Each of these gray rows that's showing up on the screen is what's called a microservice. And I'm being prompted now to make a decision uh, that relates to the identify file format microservice. So I'm being asked if I want to perform file format identification. And I'm going to select yes. And the reason for that is that I know that this microservice is important in order to carry out other microservices that relate to the file format, uh, like characterizing and normalizing um, files. And so then it, you can see this already. If you expand a microservice, you can see its component jobs. So these are the different um, things that are happening that result in a microservice being carried out. And if you select a gear icon, next to any of these jobs, you can see a task output, which will allow you to view more details about that job. So let's take a look at the task output for identify file format. All right, so this is the task output for identify file format. And so we can see first, and these different task outputs, some of them are more or less human legible. This one is, is fairly easy to follow. So you can see here the file name. So the file that we're, we're looking at the task output for. As you scroll down, you can see the tool that was used for file identification. So it's Siegfried 1.9.6. And then if you continue down a little further, the command output is format slash 124. So if you were to go to Pronom and look this up, you'd be able to find all the details about this particular format. Um, but Archivmatica has also put this out for us in English. This is an EPS3 format file. 
And if you continue down, you'll see similar outputs for each of the different files in this package. Now, of course, you're not going to look at these task outputs for every single job um, that feeds into every single microservice, but making these available to users is part of how we follow through on our commitment to transparent and um, user accessible design. It's also really useful if you run into something like an error, this is where you could find more details about what's happening and share that with something like a troubleshooting team. So let's go back now to continue with the transfer. So I'm being asked now if I would like to create a single SIP and continue processing, send to the backlog or reject the transfer. I'm going to create a single SIP and continue processing. And that will send this package of content along to the ingest tab. And we'll pick up on the processing of that content in the next video. All right, so just for a quick recap, in this video, we saw first how to start a transfer in Archivmatica, then what a microservice, a job, and a task output are, and lastly, how to make a decision for a microservice. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at the ingest tab, as well as normalization and other processes that help transform your content into an AIP.